Um, also, I, the clay guys is still sitting out in front of the Benvenuti. <laughs> if you have not gotten your clay yet, it will be out there to, um, today, tomorrow, and um, I don't know, maybe even next week. But I'll probably end up starting to put it in the office because um, I'm getting tired of rolling it out there every day. But you should have enough clay even without picking that up to uh, make your mug. So the technique that I'm going to use to make this mug is a slab technique. Uh, I'm not going to be coiling this mug. I'm going to be kind of building it with wet clay. Ooh, that clay I can tell has been sitting there for quite some time because it smells a little bit moldy, which is actually good for clay. Moldy clay is more plastic clay. It's more flexible. It, it bends more easily. I'm just going to kind of grab a chunk. Your mug doesn't have to be huge. Keep in mind when you're building anything out of clay that it's going to shrink about a half an inch. By the time you fire it, it will be half an inch smaller. All right, so I'm going to build this with slabs. So that means I need to do some wedging and rolling of slabs today. I'm going to teach you how to kind of build it with sort of like not a leather hard slab but um, a slab that's dried a little bit that you can still bend. And then I'll teach you how to do something called pulling a handle which is um, a technique that where you roll out a coil and you dip it in a bucket of water and you kind of pull it sort of like taffy until it gets into the shape that you want it to be. Uh, yes, Malia, I am recording this demo. That's a nice wedged piece of clay. I'm doing this chrysanthemum wedging right now. It's kind of circular. It's sort of my preferred wedging technique. Sort of pushing down in the middle and then kind of rolling it and then curling it back up again. That's sort of like slow-mo version of it. Chrysanthemum is a flower and you get these kind of petal like forms around the edge. Okay so rolling a slab. First thing I like to do is like really compress my clay by dropping it on the surface of the table. Compressed clay is really ideal because all your clay particles are um, really close together and which can prevent cracking. Um, and then I'm going to roll a slab that's going to be long and skinny because I'm going to cut a strip out that's going to turn into the wall of my mug and the foot. So I'm just going to kind of create sort of a long shape here. As I am pancaking this down, I want to move it around so that it doesn't stick to the table. Now you want to make the wall on um, your slab a little bit thicker than you want your wall to be because I want to show you how to, to belly it out a little bit. And when you belly it out, which means you kind of push on the inside and push it out so it's not just straight up and down. Um, you need a little extra clay to kind of because it's gonna um, it's gonna kind of stretch and get thinner. All right, so I've got this sort of thick pancake here, and you're gonna have to find like a kitchen rolling pin. And then I always before I roll a slab, I always kind of make sure that my rolling pin doesn't have any chunks of dried clay on it, because those will leave an impression in your slab. Just going to roll in um, a lot of different directions actually. It's a good idea to do that because then your clay particles, instead of just being in one direction and warping as it dries in that direction, everything will be like this and it'll all kind of warp and hold itself straight. I want to kind of get it longer here. 
essentially, you know, you really eventually want to think about the ergonomics of a vessel, especially if you're making something functional. Um, I want my handle to feel good. Um, I don't want it to be too heavy. And I also don't want to burn myself when I'm holding it with the handle, right? I don't want the handle to be too close to the body. Um, when I put my lip on the rim, I don't want it to be sharp. I want it to be nice and um, nice and round and comfortable to drink out of. And I also don't want the, the liquid to come out too fast. All right, so I'm just going to find a board. Preferably a board that's not going to warp on you, like not a piece of cardboard, but something that is nice and firm. And I think I'm just going to lay it like this. And I'm going to roll it out one more time. After you move it and bend it and you put it on its other surface, then you want to roll it out one more time just so that you're pushing all the clay particles nice and flat. I'm not going to cut it out yet. I want it to dry a little bit. So this is sort of like the prep work that you would need to do to make your mug. So that's my the body wall of my mug. And now I'm going to make the base which is basically the same thing. I'm going to make a slab. And I might want to even have extra, extra slab clay for maybe some fun features or other elements that I might want to add. It's always a good idea to have a little extra slab so that you can um, have like, some clay that's the same, dry the same consistency as the rest. So this is going to be the base of my mug. There's a lot of different ways to make a mug. You can pinch a mug, you can coil a mug, you can throw a mug, you can slab a mug. Really, any possible way of building out of clay. You can extrude a mug. An extruder is like, um, like that little Play-Doh tool you had when you were a kid that squished out the spaghetti hair, but big. You can extrude, extrude a bunch of hollow tubes and cut them up and turn them into mugs. That's something I've been wanting to invest in for you guys as an extruder. It's on my list. I think it's fun. Slab roller. That's another thing you're going to see in a big pottery studio is a slab roller, which is just um, a big machine that makes this for you. <laughs> okay, so I would make the base the same thickness as your wall. And then you could use, you could do freeform. This kind of depends on what your instincts tell you. Do you want your mug to be kind of like organic shaped, um, which means the foot doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect circle. Um, you want it to be geometric because we're making slabs, we can make it geometric. So really, it's really up to you. Um, also, you want to think about what are you drinking? Are you drinking your coffee? Do you prefer small coffee mugs or large coffee mugs? Are you drinking tea? Are you drinking cocoa? What are you drinking out of this mug? Are you eating cereal out of this mug? Are you eating ice cream out of this mug? You know, think about the function. And that will dictate the form. I'm trying to find a shape that I, I'm just going to use this. And I'm just going to cut my base. I'm going to have to add an, a foot onto this later. So the base is not the foot. The base is the base. There should be an extra foot on top of the base. And the reason for that is that you don't want your mug to rock on the table. You don't want it to wobble. You want it to be nice and sturdy. So that is my foot. And then I, I'm just going to save this slab here um, for extra stuff. Actually, I'm not, I'm not going to save the whole thing because you guys have to conserve your clay right now. So only save as much as you think you might want for some features and then re-wedge the rest of the extra clay. Now here's a couple fun things you can do with your slabs. Um, you can press things in your slab before you let it dry. So that's what I'm going to do. 
Um, I have a couple things here. You've seen these before. This is my textile block printing um, block from Pakistan. And this is just a little texture thing that I bought at Alpha Ceramics. It has these tiny little beautiful waves. It looks kind of like a Japanese textile print to me. I love this. So I'm going to put this right on there. And you could use anything, anything that has texture. And I'm going to roll it right into my slab. And then guess what? The glaze will do really fun things if you have an interesting texture in your slab. I think I'm going to just be systematic about it and put these right next to each other, but you could overlap them on a diagonal or whatever you want. You could stamp other things into it. This could be like the base texture. So ceramics too, you guys are making matching mugs. So you might want to think about, are they going to be the same? Are they going to be different? If they're different, how do they complement each other? I think, you know, now that, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't decided yet if I like the grid of that or not, or if I would want to mix it up a bit. Maybe I mix it up right where they connect with the way they connect. That's kind of fun, the way it kind of overlaps like that. Let me straighten the camera up a bit so you guys can see a little better what I'm doing. Do I have any questions so far? <clears throat> All right. And then, of course, you can take other things and sort of... I might want some deeper grooves. I'm going to teach you how to push this out from the inside. So when I push it out from the inside, this texture is going to expand and do some interesting things. Of course, you don't want to punch all the way through because your wall needs to be functional. But the glaze will do some fun things in here. Or, or acrylic paint, whatever. Whatever we end up using to paint these. I think I'm going to experiment a little bit and actually make this now instead of letting it dry a bit. I think I'm going to make the wall and then I'll attach it to the base later. So here's another important thing to consider. The inside of your vessel is just as important or even more important than the outside. Okay, so we have to consider the texture on the inside we have to consider the texture on the bottom of the inside, on the other side of the foot. All surfaces matter. Um, so I think I'm going to punch some texture into maybe just the inside of the foot because if I flip that slab over and try to put a texture on the other side, I'm going to flatten out what I just did. So I don't really want to do that. So I'll have to think of another interesting thing to do on the inside. But this is going to be the inside of the base. And I'm, I'm kind of want it to sort of mimic the outside of the wall. It's a little starburst right there. When you roll this texture on there, be careful. I probably should have put a piece of paper under this so it doesn't stick too bad. I'll trim this off after I attach. Okay, so I'm actually just going to attempt to put this together right now because I want to show you the walls, how to push the walls out, and I'm a little worried that if I um, wait till this dries too long, I won't be able to show you that. Okay, so I've traced this out exterior line so that I know where to put my scoring. And because this is such a delicate wall, I'm just going to score with my needle tool. I'm not going to cut this outer edge off first because I might need that clay. So 
I'm scoring so that I can attach the wall. So what I'm doing here. And now if you were going for more of a geometric form with your slab, you might want to wait till it sets up to leather hard um, so that you can have more structure and control. But what I'm actually going for here is more of a, of a organic uh, wall in an organic form. So I want it to be bendy. So now I'm going to slice this. And I'm going to slice this. And I'm not sure how much length I'm going to need yet until I put it on here. I'm going to back up. So I'm going to leave this open here for now, but I do need to score this. Mm, actually, I need to score this end. <laughs> this is longer. This is going to probably be my rim, which I'll have to do something else with, like put another coil on it or something. So I'm going crosshatch for the scoring, so crisscross, and then I'm going to take a paintbrush and dip it in a little bit of water, and we're not using too much water here, just enough to create a little bit of a glue. Okay, this is kind of the fun part. It's going to be pretty floppy, but that's sort of what I'm going for, and I'll show you why in a minute. This is going to be a kind of a big mug. I like big mugs, unless I'm drinking tea. I prefer to drink tea out of small mugs or small teacups because it stays hotter longer. All right? You just you have your teapot, so you just pour. Okay. So I'm realizing this is too tall, so I'm going to cut this off here. I could use this for something else. I'm going to save it. All right, so this is the tricky part. And this should be on your board by now. So build this on your board so that you don't have to pick it up. And I'm going to put my board on my Lazy Susan so you guys can kind of see it turn. So now I'm going to very delicately kind of spin this. I know you don't have one of these at home, so you're just going to have to turn your board. I hope I have enough length here. I think I do. Just about. Might have to make it a little tinier than I thought. Okay, so as you get to the closing of this, there's a gap here. So that means that I'm going to have to shrink this circle a little bit so I'm going to score a little bit in I know you can't see that right now I'm sorry I'm going to just score in so I can make it a tiny bit smaller and then I'm also going to score the inside of this crisscross and then I'm going to score the outside of this that's where I'm going to attach the two. Now this is just one technique. You don't have to work with a wet slab like this. You can let it get um, drier so that it, you have more control over it if you're not going to be bowing it out. So now I'm going to put these two sections together. Okay. This is not the most versatile webcam here. And I'm just going to pinch, trying my best maybe not to disturb the pattern too much because I like it. And I'm just, I'll clean up the inside, but I kind of like that edge to exist on the outside. It's sort of a fun little feature of the mug. Okay, so now I can mess around with the form. I'm going to go back to, let's see if we can do like uh, aerial view maybe. 
can only bend it so far. I guess that's okay. So now it's sort of on there and I can attach it a little bit better. I'm going to cut off this excess. I need to spend a little bit more time attaching the wall to the base. Peel this extra off, and I've got a piece of printer paper between my board and the cup. I think that's really important. If you don't have that, your cup will suction itself onto the board. And then take one of the tools that you have found in your house or that I've given you, and you want to. My finger is on the inside, and I'm just kind of sweeping up, sort of sealing the seam between the base and the wall just delicately right now. I'll probably have to go back in and do some stamping down there. Right now I just want it to be attached. There's so many different stages in working with clay. There's the wet stage and then you let it dry a little bit and you can sculpt it a little bit more and then you let it dry some more and then you can carve into it. It's just so much you can do. Okay, so now I just have this like basic form here. It's not really the form that I want yet. So and I do need to close this inside seam. This is, I need to close this because uh, on the inside of your pot you don't want um, there to be places where bacteria from your liquids can build up and grow uh, mold or whatever. So your the inside of your vessel has to be um, sort of gap and crease free. So I'm going to seal that up and I also need to go in and close the gap. I might just do it with my finger right now between the base and the wall on the inside. These steps are important because later on when the piece is drying or firing they can these cracks and seams can open up. All right, so this is kind of the fun part, I think. This is why I put it on wet, is that I'm gonna very delicately and carefully, like maybe I'm even sticking my, I dipped my finger in the water, I'm gonna push out. Maybe I'll start with just these circular areas I don't know if you can see the silhouette of that, but you see how I'm kind of very gently sort of pushing that out. So it's kind of like a bump. Then I'll go find another one and I'll work on that one. Can't do this with a leather hard slab. And if your clay starts to like show any stress cracks and stuff, as long as it's not cracking all the way through, that could be an interesting texture. And um, there's no plan here. I didn't plan to use these textures and I didn't plan. I'm just kind of going off of my instincts, which is what I want you to do with these mugs. Let's just have fun with it. Push yourself, try something new. Don't do it quickly just to get it done, to have fun with it. So now it looks a lot more pillowy. It's kind of got this fun sort of um, warty sort of texture. Okay, so that's the start. I'm obviously not done with this yet have to deal with the rim. The rim should be a different thickness and shape than your wall. And you don't really want a rim of a mug to be straight on the top and then go straight down. That's not really fun to drink out of. You want something that's round and kind of easy to put your lips on. I'm going to just use the Lazy Susan to let this rotate through. Um, and then I might flare, I could flare it out and round it, 
I think that's what I'm going to do. Instead of adding another coil, which you could too, I prefer um, thin rims. I don't like rims that are too thick because that feels weird too. And I'm just going to, with my fingers, kind of work on rounding this out and sort of pinching those edges away and curling it out. Not too much. I don't want it to be like crazy flared. Just enough to feel different. And then I think I'm going to leave this little weird edge here. This I love this line, but I'm going to put the handle right here. So I wouldn't be drinking out of this. It's going to be like a fun little feature that is going to sit kind of at the beginning of my handle. And I'll probably work on this a lot more after it dries a bit, but this is the basic form. Any questions? I know we're nearing the end of class here. Uh, you obviously, there's no due date for this yet. Don't even worry about starting it right now if you had to finish your drawings. Um, I will give you plenty of class time to make these. And uh, we're going to sort of simultaneously be doing that. And then on Wednesdays, we're going to be starting our research and our design of our our big vessels project. And each class period, we're going to be learning about different vessels from around the world. And we'll start getting inspired. OK, so that is the beginning. I still feel like it's not anywhere near what I would want it to be. So I'm going to continue to sort of push out. I'm going to look at, I'm going to step back and really look at the form and decide if I need to bow it out in other areas. I want it to be balanced. And then I can start thinking about the foot. How am I going to make the foot? How am I going to make the handle? A mug with character is really fun to drink out of. In fact, my favorite mug for years was a uh, it was a very simple diner mug, and it was yellow, and it had a "Don't worry, be happy" face on it. And there's just something about that mug that just like started my day off right. If I drank out of it, I got I got I had a sort of a mug addiction. You guys got a lot of mugs. I had to stop going into thrift stores and buying mugs for a while because I was I had like mugs that were boxed up in my home. So when you really start to make these forms, you start to get really interested in in them um, out out in your world. So I'm just going around with the inside of my hand and kind of sculpting it from the inside giving it some volume and some life. And here's a little, sort of a little pro tip. Even though your mug is all floopy and like misshapen on the outside, um, you want your rim to be as round as possible. That is also true for when you're throwing. Like if you if you hit your smack your mug off center for a visual effect on the wheel, you you go back in after you do that and you recenter the rim. It's a functional thing. So now I'm spinning this rim and I'm trying to make it as round as possible. It's like it's like a reset. It's like, ooh, it's all crazy right here, and then all of a sudden I get to the rim and I know I can drink out of it. Now that I did all that pushing out, um, I'm going to get there's water in the bottom of your mug. And you want to get it out of there because it will, it will crack your piece. You can just do that with paper towel or a sponge if you have it. Like I cut off a little piece of sponge from your kitchen sponge. 
for your garage sponge. You never want to leave water in the bottom of a vessel or anywhere. You never want to leave pools of water anywhere on a ceramic, a wet ceramic piece. It will crack your piece. Okay, I'm going to seal that inside edge one more time. I'll probably do maybe do a little paddling when it's not so wet. And then maybe possibly a little bit of smoothing of that connection I made at the base and some put some texture back in there. The nice thing about this is that it's um, it bends so you can kind of go in there and reapply it. There's a lot of different ways of doing feet. I can attach feet to this. I could, which is, might be what I do, I could actually um, push a little edge right here along the whole bottom and then see how that's kind of creating a foot. I even kind of like my fingernail mark and that's kind of nice. And that way I don't have to make an extra foot kind of like it looks sort of like a snail I like that sort of lumpy heavy bottom um, and when you can actually you might want to do it now pick it up very delicately and you want to tap the inside up just the inside just a little bit this will keep it from rocking. If there's not a flat slab here and you have a foot that touches the table and the inside of your piece is slightly curved in, con convex or concave, depending on which angle you're looking at it, there's your foot. And then it looks kind of neat on the, oops, it looks kind of neat on the inside too because it's you've got this like curve on the inside. And that's super fun. So, you know, to be honest, like, I feel like this is done. The form is done. All I need to do now is put a handle on it, which I'll show you next class. I'll take some um, photos of this, like, from the side. This webcam arm is just difficult, but you can kind of get a sense of it. So that, you know, that took me, what, half an hour to make? And you know, you guys will probably take you guys maybe an hour, hour and a half. So you don't have to work on it outside of class. I will give you class time. All right, any questions?